Today we're going to be talking about Twilio, what it is, what it's good for, answering as many questions as I can fit into a 10 minute period. We're going to be doing some code, we're going to be talking about a giveaway later on, sponsored by Twilio. It's going to be a fun video, so hope you all enjoy. Let's get to it. This video is sponsored by Twilio. Like many of you out there who are developers and working in professional nine to five jobs, you've probably encountered Twilio at some stage, whether that's online at a developer conference or somewhere on the internet because their developer advocates and developer relations crew are there everywhere and they do a really good job. But much like myself, I've never really dived into what Twilio is and what kind of problems they're solving. So I had a look and this is what I came up with. Essentially, it all boils down to communication. Twilio is a communication platform leveraged by developers. At least that's what it says on its website. Twilio's programmable application program interfaces are a set of building blocks developers can use to build the exact customer experiences they want. Translate that into everybody terms. When you're a business, you typically want to email someone, you want to be able to contact them through SMS, you maybe want to have a call center, you maybe want to have some kind of voice chat system or verification for people. Basically, anytime you want to reach out as a business to your customers, Twilio most likely has a solution for that. If we're to have a look at their products, for instance, their listed solutions and products are Twilio Flex, which is their cloud contact center platform services. So identity lockup, verification and authentication. They also help with marketing campaigns. So a UI based marketing tool. Where it gets juicy is when you get down to their SMS and kind of like mass communication, problem solving things, programmable messaging, uh, programmable voice, programmable video. The thing about Twilio really is that they try and give you the building box to solve these problems, sending SMS to hundreds of thousands of people or email to a vast quantity of people. They understand that it's not a one size fits all solution for a lot of these businesses. A lot of the time you're going to have to customize things or build things to work with your specific stack or your specific business logic. So what they really try and do is make everything as programmable as possible. So you can put in Twilio's API because it's all API driven. Uh, and build your logic and solution around that. It's just a tool that you're using to get your job done, really. Essentially, all this boils down to if you're trying to communicate with your customers and you're doing that at scale, Twilio is probably going to be something that you want to look at. There are three case studies that I want to kind of reference here. One is Lyft, one is Airbnb, and one is the Stranger Things Hackathon, which was really cool. So if you head to twilio.com slash customers, and all of this is gonna be linked down below. So I'll point out the relevant links as to what might actually be useful for you to look at. All of these companies, you're going to know they're really big brands. Companies like Lyft, Airbnb, Shopify, Uber, Instacart, Marks and Spencers, yo, m and the prawn sandwiches there are amazing. I miss that from the UK. I really do. So if we have a look at the customer page and we look at Lyft specifically, Lyft's problem was solved by using Twilio Flex, which is their like contact center, contact platform service. I know that doesn't sound sexy, but <laughs> it's it's hard to make a contact center like sound cool, but this is actually kind of cool. So bear with me and we'll get into it. The way in which I can describe Flex is basically Twilio giving you like the Lego blocks to build a contact center platform and then you can extend upon that functionality with react which is really cool you can build plugins you can add on more bricks or take bricks out and replace them and do all sorts of funny things so the main reason they've done that is because again they realize there's no one size fits all solution so they're basically just giving you everything to make it functional but then they allow you to extend and uh, build things around that to kind of customize it for your needs which is what they've done with Lyft. If you're familiar with a ride sharing app where um, you know, they'll send you a notification when the driver's arrived, the driver's dropped off, they'll send you a notification for the uh, rating or something like that. They were using Twilio for that first. But the problem came around with the contact center. They had to look up an average of 11 data fields for every contact for each one of those fields required at least three clicks to access across multiple channels. So they had a bunch of different things going on. And what Twilio Flex did was allow you them to have like one source of truth to bring all of that data together so they could manipulate it and it would it basically help reduce the amount of costing that the call center took. So that's left. That's the Flex platform. The other one, which I thought was really cool, was Airbnb. One thing that blew my mind with Airbnb. So this is when Airbnb was not quite in its infancy, but it was it was scaling and, and going through those uh, hyper growth problems that, that tend to come about. So basically, I'm, if you haven't booked with Airbnb before, you submit a request to book an apartment or a house or whatever it is. And the host has basically time to either accept or deny that request. What was happening 
was a lot of the hosts weren't responding in time. So they'd be getting sent an email to say, hey, this person is wanting to book in and they weren't responding to that email. And so what they would have to do, Airbnb reps would actually have to go and physically like call these people, thousands of people to be like, hi, I'm um, just letting you know that somebody's trying to book. So like, can you please like accept or deny the request please? Okay, thanks, bye. It takes a lot of time and money to do that. So what they did was replace that whole process with requests via SMS. If the host hadn't replied in a certain period of time, then they would go through and send them an SMS and then they could accept or deny the booking based off that, which is a really cool solution for this whole problem. Another cool, not really business related case study, but this would be really cool for like an art exhibit or something similar, is that somebody built the Stranger Things lights with Firebase, Zapier and Twilio. <laughs> what they did, they set up a Stranger Things wall and then you could send it a message and then it would light up. So that's saying, hi, hacker. Hi hackers, that's pretty cool. So yeah, basically he set this up so you could send it a text message and then it would display the text message in a Stranger Things type of manner. And there's actually a full tutorial on how to do that if you wanted to. I don't know, if you wanted to set up a Stranger Things thing at home, then uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to. And he's got a whole tutorial here on how to do that. So that's with Firebase, Twilio and Zap here as well. I'm assuming there's app here kind of hooks. Ah, oh, there we go, the web hooks there. Cool, that would actually be quite fun to do. Quite fun to do. So now we've talked about what Twilio is and the case studies, let's actually get into some code and send our first SMS notification. We're gonna make an SMS message appear on my phone. I've got my phone here, it's all ready to go. Not gonna show any personal information, but we're gonna send myself a text message because I have no friends and nobody will send me a message. The Twilio documentation is probably some of the best that I've seen so far, and I like it. It's good. A lot of the time it's basically a hello world and off you go and then you've got to basically pick whatever slices of functionality you need. Here they actually help you build a chatbot, send appointment reminders, which is if you're tasked as a business to do something and you know your product owner says, cool, we need to set up appointment reminders, copy paste this and use it however you want and you're really good to go. The other cool thing I like about this is that they've provided you with a really good list of like starting languages and basically learning resources to get going in like whatever thing you need. So if we're looking at the um, SMS API, you've got code examples for Node.js, C Sharp, PHP, Ruby, Python, Java, even curl, just so you can send something through the command line, and then the Twilio uh, CLI, which is really cool. And it looks like a pretty simple API. All you're doing is getting in your um, environment variables, so your account SID and your auth token, acquiring the client, and then you send the message client.messages.create and then you log out log out the message <laughs> it's it's pretty pretty simple excellent we have a node application running how good is that okay let's do some stuff then just a gentle reminder to never show your auth token that's a big no-no we might be able to send a message now holy moly this is exciting what hmm what's going on here Oh, are you kidding? Yeah, pretty sure I've got the right number. Oh, what's going on there? This is frustrating. Oh, no, that's right. Um. So after all of that, unfortunately, SMS isn't going to work for us just this instant. The reason for that came thankfully from Twilio support, which was a very quick and easy process to get going. So what they said essentially was this is expected behavior at the moment. They do have options to help improve that deliverability, but New Zealand carriers have recently intensified their message filtering to help prevent malicious unwanted messages to their subscribers. So New Zealand unfortunately has had a real uptick in terms of scammers using SMS to try and prey on people. It's really unfortunate and New Zealand carriers have really cracked down on that. But we have a solution and that is the programmable voice API. So we'll move on to that now. So if we go back to the Twilio documentation and look at voice, this is what we get. Programmable voice. We can quickly make and receive calls with our application. We're just going to be doing a very basic, quick, make your first video call, see how that goes. Let's get into it. So we can see here making calls, super easy. Using the Twilio REST API, you can make outgoing calls to phones, SIP enabled endpoints and Twilio client connections. Oh, that's funny. The um, the highlight is also in the Twilio red color as well. That's kind of cool. Uh, great. So it looks very similar to before. We grab the SID and the token, uh, require the library, and then we make the call. So let's go over here. Great. All done. 
So we're going to use the default uh, Twilio URL. What this basically does is provide a voice XML file, which is then read out once I hopefully pick up the phone. Our to field is going to be my mobile number. From is going to be one of the mobile devices which I have registered. In this case, we're going to grab that fellow up there, put them there. Great. We're good to go. Bar one more thing. I tried this earlier and unfortunately I wasn't able to get a voice call up and running. The reason for that is that you need to enable that geographic location in which you're calling to within the Twilio API console. So if we head back to our console, we go down to the uh, phone icon for programmable voice. Then under the call section, we should have geo permissions. This is where you enable the locale that you actually want to make calls from. So if we head under geo permissions, we have low risk and high risk areas. If I just look up my country, which is New Zealand, we can see New Zealand and I have selected the continent, not really continent, but thank you very much, New Zealand. We, we need the support. So we've enabled that. So now if we go back to our code and we run this by saying node twilio.js and I have my phone here. So there's no funny business. This is, this is genuinely, it's going to happen. We hit OK. It's running. One, two, three. Oh, phone call. From Youngstown, Ohio in the US. OK, I'm going to see if we can, we can pick this up. Except. We're trying our documentation. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, we just got ricked rolled by Trillio. <laughs> the whole thing is, thank you for trying our documentation, enjoy, and then it, it goes in, into the rick roll. Anywho, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's Twilio Voice making a successful call with the API. The other thing that you're probably here for is to find out about the giveaway. So let's move on to that. If you're ever curious on trying Twilio as an API or bring that into a sample project, today is the day. Twilio have got some really good incentives to get you going. They really want to see some like creative or cool things like, like the Stranger Things hacker thing we talked about before. If you want to do something crazy, please go for it. I'm sure they'd love to see it. The first 100 entries into the Twilio competition are going to stand to receive some cool Twilio swag, much like I'm wearing at the moment. Ah. Twilio. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to slide through. We'll see. Notepad, a red t-shirt, scrunchies, pens, there you go, sticker pack one, sticker pack two, sticky notes, there we go, little pen. So there are four easy steps to do. Step one, head to 12.io slash challenge. Again, the link will be in the description. The first thing you need to do is sign up to your Twilio account and you can use the code build now to receive a $20 US credit to that account. The second is to build your app with Twilio. Do whatever you want, make it cool, make it pretty fantastic, and uh, yeah, you'll probably end up winning some swag. Third step is to share that on YouTube or Instagram TV with the hashtag try it on Twilio. Step four is to come back to the page, fill out the form with the YouTube or Instagram TV URL, and you're done. That's it. That's all you need to do. It, it is a bit of an ask to create something with the API. If you've got an existing project, maybe that would be something cool to work that into. Otherwise, if you want to create something big and snazzy and do whatever else, go ahead. If you want to get started learning Twilio, first of all, I would recommend checking out Twilio Quest. It's a downloadable desktop game with an interactive programming environment, so you can actually go through and learn Twilio in like an actually fun way. So please check it out. Just some housekeeping as well. This is a giveaway, so there are some kind of like restrictions and legalities around this. First is that the promotion is only available in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam. So that really South Pacific Asia region. Everyone who's eligible for this promotion will receive an email from Twilio and is not intended to result in a preferred treatment or to influence a purchasing decision. This is just a bit of fun. So again, before I go, it's 12.io slash challenge and using the code build now you get a US $20 credit towards your account just to have a play around with. One other thing I have to show you while I'm doing this whole Twilio video is the most nerdy out there learning material. Whoever got this approved at Twilio, like I'm gonna have to give you give you a round of applause there because <laughs> you did a really good job. Basically what they've done is they've made like a 16 bit or eight bit, I'm not quite sure which retro game around how to use Twilio. It's absolutely phenomenal. So you can see here, like it's all like, old school graphics and uh, 
you know, they've, they've made like weapon systems. They've got like a custom soundtrack for the game. It's just, I reckon it was a bunch of Twilio devs who were like, oh, I really want to make a game, but like, don't really have time. I've got like work and like the kids and everything else. I wonder if we can like make a business case for making our own game at work. Whoever got this approved, your talents, I'm sure you must be a fantastic developer, but your talents in getting people to say yes, you should be you should be a lawyer or something. I mean, I, I hope that you're using those talents efficiently. I'll link the YouTube video and all this kind of stuff in the description below again. It's probably one of the coolest developer relations activities I've I've seen so far. It's it's very cool. They have a little robot called Cedric too. Very cute. It's not just like concepts either. There's actual code in the game. Like it teaches you how to do stuff. It looks like it's got an integrated IDE. Have a look at Twilio Quest. It seems to be really engaging. If you're curious, go check it out. It looks like fun. So yeah, that's that's it. That's Twilio in a nutshell. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that everyone at Twilio enjoyed this video as well. This is the first time I've had a sponsor come on the channel and they've been so great to work with over the past couple of weeks. So I want to say a massive thank you to them for supporting the channel. And for everyone else out there, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.